Today I want to talk about Claire's, as in Claire's accessories. You might be like, what's this got to do with like, you know, beauty? All they do is sell like, pens with feathers on the end of them and stuff like that. But I kind of want to focus on their makeup side of a brand and also their ear piercing, because that's still a thing. And I want to kind of focus on like, should it still be a thing? Is that a service they should be offering? You know, all this kind of stuff. There's some drama with a makeup too, we'll get into it. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up for more commentary and reaction videos. Follow my reaction channel right here. Go ahead and subscribe. I'll leave it linked below and uh, in the pinned comment. I always say that and I never do, but I'll try. So Claire's accessories, or Claire's describes itself as a global brand powerhouse for self-expression, creating exclusive, curated, and fun, fashionable, I would use that word very loosely, jewelry and accessories and offering world-leading piercing services. Bear that in mind, right? The company operates under two brand names, Claire's and Icing. It's not exactly the way I would describe Claire's accessories um, or Claire's in general. Icing, by the way, is like a different brand. I think they sell other brands as well. Like I've seen Eyelaw on their, their website. So Claire's is more commonly known perhaps for a store that kind of caters to younger people, mainly young girls. It's full of like cheap stuff, cheap bracelets, things you would find like for free or like in those machines where you twist the thing. Bright crap with feathers on, things like that. Uh, and the occasional useful thing, right? You can find anything from like a feather boa to a quite useful pair of earrings or some horrible clip on earrings that are like pineapples. That would be cute, actually. It's also a great shop for, like, if your friend's having a themed party and you're like, oh, what do you want to go as? And you're like, I don't know, some kind of, like, 80s unicorn. It's a great shop to go and get stuff for, but more than likely you're going to throw it out the next day or lose half of it when you're drunk. Claire's used to be, for me and my friends anyway, like, it was it was a must. Only Well, maybe because of the place we used to go only had, like, five shops. But, like, we, we would go in there, especially in the days when, uh, in the 90s, when temporary tattoos were thing. Yeah. Um, we would like buy a load of those or, or like my friends wanted socks or something like that. And even as we got older, it became very useful for like when I had like my tongue pierced or my friends had belly button piercings to get like stuff like that from Claire's, which I, it's so strange you can buy that from Claire's, but I mean, I guess they pierce, right? Not belly buttons or tongues yet. One of my friends actually got caught shoplifting a belly bar from there once. So lots of memories made. They don't only sell these kind of accessories though. They also sell makeup and again makeup I use the term makeup very loosely because it's that kind of like playtime very childish kind of makeup you know nothing too serious it's like a, a lip gloss and a very poorly pigmented eyeshadow or a blush or like a peel off nail polish it's like the height of kids makeup like it's for kids you know what I mean there's been quite a bit of drama with their makeup products though a potentially cancer causing drama. I touched on this very briefly. I did a video about celebrities and their collaborations with brands and how they went wrong. And one of the collaborations was Jojo Siwa with Claire's and all their products had to get recalled because they were potentially contaminated with asbestos. Now, I actually, I can't remember if they were recalled or if they were just taken off shelves and a kind of warning was put out. Either way, there was an apology from Jojo. So this happened way back in 2017. Claire's came under quite heavy scrutiny, and rightly so, uh, when it was discovered that there was asbestos in some of their makeup products. So asbestos, I, I, wait, I have this picture in my mind that asbestos is that yellow stuff that lines the walls, but it's not, that's insulation. But it's a naturally occurring mineral fiber for those of you who aren't familiar. I think we all know what asbestos is, right? But it was basically used in a lot of construction and manufacturing way back when, uh, but it's banned now. It's banned pretty much everywhere because of how dangerous and harmful it is. It has a very, very serious health risk. Like, it's it's linked to lung cancer. Here's a quick summary off a timeline of this asbestos situation, right? So in December 2017, a mother actually took it upon herself to send off her daughter's Claire's product, her Claire's makeup, to um, a lab to get tested after she had seen that there was asbestos in other products, not in Claire's products, but had been found in other beauty products. So she was like, hmm, I wonder how actually safe this kid's makeup is. And the test came back with traces of, I need to read it, sorry, tremolite asbestos, which I guess is a certain kind of asbestos, within the Claire's kids' makeup, right? This happened, Claire's, uh, Claire's were like, oh, well, okay, let's recall some products. So they did recall a lot of products and then they did their own testing and they were like, oh yeah, no, everything's totally safe. 
Like, it's fine. We did, we tested ourselves. There was um, an investigation into it by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in the US in two, 2019. So it was their own investigation. Also found asbestos in some of these products. And they also did a test when they didn't. So I guess it just depends on the products, right? Either way, there shouldn't be asbestos in these products. But Claire's kind of like, they they continue to say, they're like, no, our products are absolutely fine. They're absolutely safe. All these other labs that are saying they're not, are, they've, it's flawed the tests are wrong and incorrect. So what you're saying is <laughs> all these other people except you were incorrect. That's strange, very strange. But yet they still pulled a lot of their products from the shelf because of these results. So they still they still were like, okay, maybe we should do something <laughs> behind the scenes. Don't let anyone know. They also offered refunds to people and there were actually some lawsuits as well from people saying they were affected by this um, asbestos. There hasn't been anything super serious when it comes to asbestos in their makeup recently um, in terms of uh, it being in the products. <laughs> so maybe they've moved factory or something or maybe they just, you know, stopped putting asbestos in their products. It was good though because it did kind of spark this, no, it wasn't good, it happened but it did kind of spark this more like, okay, maybe we should be a little bit more, in general, everyone, a little bit more, have more regulations when it comes to testing beauty products and, and the claims they put out and all this kind of stuff and having them tested. I said that already. But also like when it came to safety standards as well, when it came to making products. And bear in mind, bear in mind, these products were aimed at, I need some lip balm, were aimed at kids, right? You're having this harmful asbestos in these products that children are using on their face. You know, asbestos has re recorded very harmful risks to it, including cancer. And these kids are putting it on their like lips and face. Like they were very much putting kids health at risk by having these products just, you know, in all their stores around the whole world. Talking about uh, children's safety, let's talk about ear piercing, shall we? <laughs> Claire's is known for like ear piercing. It's known for being that place we can go, get cute little ears pierced, get some like, you know, little earrings from there. I always wondered, see, I mean, they've been doing it for years, seeing it when I was younger. I was like, why do they pierce their ear right in the window like that? Like that's a lot of pressure for everyone. Cause I would, I would watch waiting for someone to cry. And piercings can be scary, right? I get that. So I used to have my ear pierced here, two here, one here, and my tongue as well. And then one day I was just like, no, and took them all out. And I would always be a little bit nervous beforehand. I got mine done at a proper place, like a tattoo place, I think it was, or a piercing place. I think it was a tattoo place that did piercing, but with needles, you know, when they get a proper needle, put it through, oh, it makes me shiver. Not the guns. We'll talk about that, we'll talk about that. But who, who pierces your ears at Claire's, right? Is it somebody who has years and years of training is medically trained in any, or do they not have to be medically trained to pierce ears? You know, do they have experience with piercing people's skin? Um, uh, more than likely, no. Um, usually it's just somebody who works at Claire's who does get like Claire's accessories training. According to Claire's website, each associate is required to complete an extensive ear piercing training program. Extensive to whom? Before becoming a piercing specialist. Training includes a variety of courses from procedures, hygiene protocols, remember hygiene protocols, right? Local policy and demonstrating core piercing com competencies. To stay up to date on the best ear piercing practices, piercing specialists also have annual refresher training. They even sell like aftercare products I've seen on their website. So we're gonna take you through the steps to clean your new piercing and tell you about a few things you should be aware of. To begin, remember that your piercing earrings should not be taken out until the ears are completely healed. This is six to eight weeks for an earlobe piercing and eight to 12 weeks for an ear cartilage piercing. Before cleaning begins, it is very important that you thoroughly wash your hands with an antibacterial soap. Also, try not to touch the new piercing unless it's time to clean your ears. The front and back of the new piercing needs to be cleaned with the ear care solution that came with your piercing at least three times a day. Using a saturated cotton ball or cotton swab Apply the ear care solution to the piercing. Slide the earrings back and forth in your ear so the solution will get inside the piercing. Then, holding the earring from the front, gently rotate a few partial turns, both forward and backward. At this time, check to make sure the clutch back is securely positioned in the safety notch. You will need to clean your piercing at least three times a day. You might want to do this once in the morning after you're done taking a shower or washing your hair, 
again after school or work, and once more before bed. Please listen to this next section carefully. If you've had your earlobes pierced and you are experiencing any pain, redness, or swelling that exists for more than 24 hours after a piercing, this is not a normal result of earlobe piercing. You should contact your doctor. On the other hand, if your ear cartilage has been pierced and you are seeing any redness or swelling for more than 24 hours, our recommendation is to immediately remove the earring and see your doctor. Ear cartilage piercing carries a greater chance of serious infection, along with other risks. You should also be aware that ear piercing earrings that are too tight can cause embeddings and infection. An embedded piercing looks like the earring is beginning to disappear into the ear and the surrounding area is swollen and red. Despite their extensive training and, and, you know, all this hygiene around, and as simple as it looks to do, it doesn't mean things can't go wrong when you're piercing a child's earlobes. In fact, Claire's actually has a tiny bit of a reputation for um, infections. <laughs> <laughs> infections in the ears. I'm gonna tell you a story of um, something. There are, they're not graphic pictures, like there's no blood, but it's like crusty skin. So this happened in 2019. It doesn't mean it's the last time it happened. It's just a, a case I came across. A mum took her daughter to Claire's for her birthday to get her ears pierced. The piercing became severely infected. The piercing became actually so infected that the mum said she had to dig into the ear to remove the earring that had buried itself inside. <laughs> she also, the daughter, had to be on sepsis watch. We'll get into how, because that's dramatic, right? From just an ear piercing. So the mum, her name's Katie, took her daughter Isabel to get her ears pierced uh, for her birthday. It cost £45. Is that a lot? I feel like that's a lot for Claire's, just to have someone shoot your ear. But just a week later, Isabel would end up in excruciating pain and having to be on antibiotics. And Katie, who's the mum, said they did stick to the strict cleaning care and care in general for the piercing, but it still became infected. She said she found a ball of infection. That sounds so gross. After she had to physically dig ooh, the stud out of her daughter's ear. So the stud had gone into the actual piercing itself. She said that her daughter Isabel was screaming in pain as she was trying to dig out this stud because she literally had to scrape away a layer of skin to remove the piercing itself. To be able to even get to the stud. That sounds horrifically painful and awful. So obviously they went to the hospital, Isabel was put on antibiotics, but the mum was like told what to look out for um, in case her daughter developed sepsis. She was put on sepsis watch. So they had to be really, really careful. Her, of course, mum couldn't sleep. She was watching her daughter overnight, making sure she doesn't, you know, start showing these signs. The doctor was saying to the mum that if Isabel starts showing signs of like high temperature, struggling to breathe, please bring her back to A&E as soon as possible because it's, it's trouble. This is all from an ear piercing. So Katie, the mum, also says that the antibiotics work just fine, but has she not taken her daughter to see a doctor that day? Who knows what could have happened? Absolutely true. You might think something like that's just like an infection and like just let it heal. It's just a piercing, right? But obviously a lot worse could have happened. Katie did try and get a refund from Claire's. She had to visit the store three times and was still waiting on a refund. I wonder if she ever got it. But what's even worse is, and I told you to remember hygiene, is that Katie mentioned that the staff that the staff member was wearing gloves and kept going from prepping Isabel's ears for a piercing, prepping all the stuff while wearing these gloves, then going to serve customers, keeping the gloves on, and then coming back. So she was touching products, she was touching till points, so touching screens, whatever, with these gloves on and then going back to pierce her ear. Disgusting. I'm sure in their, like, Claire's training, they stress the importance of hygiene, but I don't think unless you've worked in a place that does piercings, like, properly, not saying they don't do Claire's piercings properly, maybe I am, or, you know, somewhere that really, really, really insists on hygiene, I think you, you don't get the importance of it in your mind until it's drilled into you. This is quite a severe case, but as I mentioned, it's not unheard of for Claire's at all. And I do get it, while many kids and parents would rather go into a place like Claire's to get their ear pierced than a tattoo place, especially if they're young, which can be quite intimidating, the Claire's stores protocol isn't exactly the safest process. For example, Claire's use a piercing gun for piercing the ears. <laughs> Oh, 
was expecting so much worse. You can't even feel it. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> According to experts who do piercings, it's a terrible thing to use it, for a number of reasons, right? Versus a piercing needle. I didn't know this at all. I don't know why I would know this, but piercing guns, the actual gun itself, is made of a kind of plastic that actually can't be sterilized or sanitized up to the standards that it needs to be for professional piercing. There's a professional piercer called John Joyce who had a quote in Good Housekeeping, right? They say the plastic would melt in an autoclave, which is what we use to sterilize instruments like needles, jewelry, and any tools we might use during the piercing. It's not exactly the, the most hygienic form of doing it. Also Claire's piercing policy is slightly problematic also, right? The thing that you have to read through or sign before you get your ears pierced. As I mentioned before, the workers at Claire's don't necessarily have formal or extensive, despite Claire saying extensive, um, training on hygiene, right? They might have it on the whole situation, the whole piercing situation, but not the hygiene part of it. It's almost like, like with the gloves, the story of the lady wearing the gloves, it's like she didn't know what the gloves were for, as though she was wearing them for her own protection, which partly she would have been, but it's almost like she didn't realize that gloves aren't so you don't have to touch a stranger's earlobe with your bare hand. It's for hygiene for everyone. It's also slightly kind of awkward and pretty much bad for the Claire's workers who have to do these piercings. There was a story in 2019 of an ex Claire's employee now who said that a seven year old came in with her mum to get her ears pierced. And when it actually came to it, the seven year old did not want them done at all. It was more of a mum's idea, right? The girl was crying, screaming. She did not want them done. I believe the worker was like, actually, I'm really uncomfortable with this. Let's maybe do this another time until when she's calmed down because this isn't the, the best situation. However, the, the employee's manager said, if the mum wanted her to do it, then you do it. No matter if she is sitting there screaming, crying, throwing up. I don't know if she was throwing up. I added that in. I would have thrown up a little bit if I was like scared. But they were saying if a mum had insisted, then you pierce folks' ears. Um, and if a Claire's employee quit after that, I could not imagine inflicting a moment of pain. And it is, it, let's be real, real, it's painful. You have to sleep on it, all this other stuff, especially when you're super, super young. There's a lot of people that may be, you know, immune to it now, just how adults get a bit more immune to tattoos. But when you're super young, it is a painful situation and scary and scary. So not only are Claire's out of date with their piercing policies from the medieval times, but they do tend to be slightly out of date with their products. Also, actually, let's talk about, let's talk about their products. Their, their products are so specific, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. They are so, let me get some examples from their website. So unless you are looking for exactly, let's say, for example, these, um, brown bear pom-pom clip-on earrings, you know? The Claire shopping experience really has to be done in person. Unless you're searching for that online, you're not gonna, why would you have those? Why would you come across them, you know? The place is so full of the most random, I guess, tat that is almost laughable. Another example, right? Like this um, black corsage faux pearl multi-strand multi -strand stretch bracelet or the St. Patrick's Day Unicorn Rainbow Veil Headband, a staple for any St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Shopping in store in person is an experience within itself, right? Let's just talk about that. You walk into Claire's, what's the first thing you see? You don't know, because everything's blending into itself because it's all horrendous tat. You don't really shop. Here's, okay, here's the shopping Claire's experience, right? You go in, you don't really shop. You try on like some funny sunglasses or a hat. They still sell those like pineapple. Why do I keep using pineapples as an example? But you know, the sunglasses with pineapples in. It's like a jumble sale of everything, of every color of a rainbow. It's the opposite to like those brownie, beige, horrible secondhand jumble sales. It's like color explosion um, jumble sales. And occasionally you might pick up a pair of socks you needed, a hair tie that you needed. Perhaps you see some nice silver hoops and you're like, oh, you know what? I do need a pair of basic silver hoops just like every day. You know what I mean? So you grab them amongst the other shit that's everywhere. They have definitely branched out a little bit. Like they do collaborations now with Disney when it was their 100th anniversary. On their website, there's also something called Somerville, whatever the fuck that is. I think it's something to do with Roblox. I don't know even what Roblox is. So maybe that's keeping them afloat. But a store like Claire's, we may look at and be like, what are you gonna do? What are you going to do in two years' time? Are we still going to be doing this? Claire's actually filed for bankruptcy a few years back. I had no idea. I did hear a rumour that they were all closing down. 
or may and maybe just staying online. But yet the store still remained open and people still kept going in. But they seem to be doing okay. Last year, actually here in the UK, they signed a deal with a UK brand, Asda. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Asda is like a grocery store mainly, but they also do things like homeware, um, clothes, things like that. They also have like really nice um, in-store made pizza. But they signed like an in-store partnership with, with them. So they're gonna have like an area for like Claire's stuff. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe a bit of makeup, maybe a bit of, um, I don't know, a pen. <laughs> A pen. But it's all kind of stuff I, I, I reckon that kids will be shopping with their parents, be like, oh mom, can I have this penguin pen and, and this radio makeup set, you know? And they also do this method in the US being sold at some CVS stores also. For my English um, audience who don't know what CVS is, CVS is all, almost like boots. Kind of like boots. Just for funsies, I asked over on Instagram, if an alien came to, to Earth and you had to explain to them what Claire's accessories was, how would you describe it to them? Because all I could think of in my mind was tap for young children. This is what people say. A place for our young to learn how to be a bad bitch, but also get their ears stabbed by a gross 16 year old. Imagine if a store had ADHD and no understanding of what value for money is. <laughs> Cutie pie girl, girly girl trinkets, toys and absolute crap. A place for children to get super glam up and their ears pierced. Overpriced, cheaply made, plastic entry level accessories and makeup. I'm reading through all of those and some extra ones over on my Instagram. Something that did kind of really stand out to me is that everybody has really fond memories of Claire's. I have fond memories of Claire's. Would it be sad if it left the high streets? Absolutely. As a child, it was incredibly fun to walk through. And even as an adult, say you're with like a younger person, you're shopping with them and you walk through Claire's or you're with your friend who again just needs some earrings, you pop into Claire's, or it's like a fancy dress party. It's still kind of fun to walk through and you can see stuff you point at them like, oh, I used to wear those in the 90s. My friends used to have those hair clips in the 90s, those little spring ones. As an adult, I feel like everyone has fond memories of Claire's. Um, but deep down, we all know it's just plastic shit. Okay, I would love to know any memories you have of Claire's. Did you use the shoplift from Claire's? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for joining me. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.